Good evening, and thank you to the uh, school board meeting for uh, March 14th, Friday, 2023. Uh, can you please stand up? And I would like to uh, invite up Hop Hop Middle School 738 students in Troop 1606, Sophia Brown, Sophia Concrete, Grace Lazoukas, 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 thank you, Eva Tikeski, and Mia Tensen. Uh, should we face this way or should we? Sure. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And just to note before we take a one minute break so our guests uh, can depart, there are 1.7 million Girl Scouts in the United States who celebrate Girl Scout Week each March. Uh, and that's because the Girl Scouts were founded March 12, 1912. Uh, in Hop Hop alone, we have 227 Girl Scouts spread through each of our five schools. And of course, uh, we love having the Scouts join us. Uh, at our meetings when they're available, especially on a rainy, snowy, yucky night. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much. We will take a two-minute break so we can get to a warmer, a warmer place in the Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you for having Welcome back to our school board meeting. Number five, uh, I'm sorry, number four on the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Scarino. Uh, just a couple of quick updates. On Friday, Saturday, March 3rd and 4th, our high school drama students brought the show Anything Goes to Life on the high school auditorium stage. Uh, these shows were the culmination of the hard work of our drama teacher, Ms. Pinkus, and her students as well as the stage crew and orchestra members, uh, always well attended. So we thank our parents and community members for coming out for those shows. Uh, on Tuesday, March 7th, students with the top five projects from the Hop Hop Middle School 
Science Fair competed in the Long Island Science and Engineering Fair, uh, Society for Science. They competed against other students with top science fair projects from throughout Nassau and Suffolk. So we had some participants and winners. Um, Mahir Kumar was first place and winner of the Young Inventor Award. Uh, Sambath Karanam, first place uh, prize as well. So we'll make sure I get this right. Athara Prabhu, second place. Michael Terzella, third. And uh, Bobby Hegde was a, a participant. So just a round of applause for those students. And then just lastly, uh, a heartwarming story here, or project, I should say. The Middle School Engineering Club, I don't know if everybody saw this, but our teachers, uh, Matthew Dietzel and Brianna LaMonaco, uh, they spent hours crafting snowmen out of wood uh, to the height of each of our kindergartners. Uh, we had some pictures of Horizons about this. Uh, so the club students went to each of the elementary schools where the students painted the snowmen and added their own hats, a scarf, and buttons. They you know, personalized them. Uh, and then they included a special tag made from the laser engraver at the newly renovated STEM lab. Again, thank you to the board for supporting that in our last bond. Uh, the, the engraving was learned. This is one on every one of the snowmen. Learn this, lean this snowman against the wall to remind you of when I was small. Take it out each winter and see I'm not as little as I used to be. So the students were able to take home this project as forever keepsakes. So we just love that project. Uh, and apparently Mr. Tasman is on the waiting list to get his own snowman. <laughs> because of all of Thank you, Mr. Scrooge. Thank you. Uh, we're going to move on to a quick um, this is Bridget Tanner for the 2023-2024 uh, school budget, please. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for staying. This is exciting. The Girl Scouts are staying for my budget presentation. <laughs> um, I remember the Girl Scout promise when I did Girl Scouts. I feel like I should recite it now because we're here together. No, I think they changed it actually, right? Um, if you're asking me, I don't. <laughs> How's it start now? Yes, right. And to live by the Girl Scout law, right? There you go. Thank you. There's nothing about Girl Scouts in this, so I apologize. <laughs> All right, so this is the same slide from the last presentation, just talking about budget development drivers and how we begin this whole process. So we take a look at our district goals, uh, enrollment and district staffing needs, which I won't get into tonight, but at the next presentation on March 28th, we will have a lot more about that. The impact of the teacher retirement system, employee retirement system, and health insurance. All those areas are roughly 70% to 80% of the district's budget. Maintaining successful educational programs and opportunities for our students, and doing all of that while operating within the tax levy limit. So tonight's focus is the revenue plan. So this is the same slide as last time again. However, to the very right, it's the percentage of the revenue budget for each of those line items. So the largest source of revenue for a school district is the tax levy. For HOPOG, it is 73% of the district's budget. For state aid, it is 16%. Pilots, which are payments in lieu of taxes, 6%. Other, which we'll get into in a couple slides from now, 2%. Reserves, 1%. And fund balance, 3%. So I know it's focused on revenue, but I will mention that school districts have to produce a balanced budget, which means that the revenues have to meet and match the expenditures. And we do that so the um, budget for the 23-24 school year will be 128, 739, 896. So the next slide, and here we go, tax levy, then state aid, pilots, other reserves, so on and so forth. The tax levy. So similar to bricks, you lay one brick, right? 
The first brick we're laying is the prior year tax levy. So we're taking a look at the 22-23 school year, starting with that number as its base. We're multiplying it by the tax base growth factor. This number comes to us from the Office of Real Property Services. We're adding in prior year pilots. We're subtracting out the prior year exemptions, which is the capital levy. Multiplying that number by the allowable levy growth factor. This number comes from the Office of the State Controller. Then we're subtracting out projected pilots. And it's interesting for Hopog because we have such a large IDA here uh, in the town. So it's Suffolk County, it's the town of Islip and the town of Smithtown all working together to come up with how many people are staying on the roll there. We're adding in any available carryover, which we don't have any. And then we're adding in our capital levy share, which includes the actual um, debt service, building aid, capital work for 23, 24, and a couple other little lines. Then we get to the very bottom and the tax levy limit for 23-24 is 93-522-532, which is a levy to levy increase of 2.57%. The next largest source is state aid. Hopog receives roughly $20 million in state aid. There's a ton of drivers that go into this, and state aid is driven by hundreds of data points, a whole bunch of calculations that are interesting and fun to me, but probably not to many others. And school district wealth is one of those things. So what determines how much money a, a district will get from the state for state aid is something called combined wealth ratio. So typically districts are hovering around 1%. Anything above one or closer to two would mean that you uh, would receive less in state aid as you're lower in need. Anything closer to or at zero would mean you are in more of need and you would receive more in state aid. So that's a little fun fact there. Other drivers are needs of students and student demographics. And then looking into the state aid categories that we receive here, expense-driven aids are transportation aid, um, a couple different uh, special education lines, BOCES, and that depends on what we expense in the year prior. Looking at enrollment-driven aids, this is um, hardware, software, technology, and textbooks. It's pretty tiny, but it's still worth mentioning because it's something. And then foundation aid is the largest source. This is year three of a three-year phase in in 23-24 at 12.7 million. And then universal pre-K, which is something that started in 21-22 school year, and each year we've seen an increase. So from the current year, 22-23, we have about 615,000. We're looking at an increase of 988,000 for 23-24. And right now we're in the process of figuring out what this looks like, looking at additional space that we have or any space we have available within the district. And we will report back to both the board and the community with exactly what the plan will be for housing uh, any additional classrooms. So next, other, what does other mean? So I changed a little bit this year, I decided that it's better to have a visual of what we re budgeted for revenue in 22-23 compared to 23-24, so you can see things that are moving and changing. Two uh, big sources or big changes. One is interest for banking. So there's money market accounts and different banking accounts that all um, re have received more interest. So the increase that you're seeing there from 22-23 to 23-24 is us working to true that number up and have it uh, to be tighter to reflect what's happening uh, in the banking world. Next, looking at tuition and health services. So this is any other district that sends their student uh, over here to Hopog, they will pay us. Um, moving down from there, building rentals. The majority of these rentals are at Whipperwell, but there are other rentals happening throughout the district. Uh, miscellaneous, so prior year BOCES, any sort of years, could be one to three years from uh, this current point in time. CPSC excess costs, which is also a prior year re refund from the county. Self-insurance recoveries, so we have a third party review for workers comp. And uh, once we hit the threshold there, we are paid in full 100% for those um, workers comp. So that's the biggest change between 22, 23 to 23, 24 but it fluctuates year to year, so it's hard to say that we'll be seeing an increase like this in the other section for years going forward. But for now, 
This is the picture of today. Next, so school districts will utilize reserves to help offset and lower that burden to the taxpayer. The other great thing to use reserves, it allows a school district to maintain a stable tax levy and it helps us as things fluctuate from one year to the next. So both employee retirement system and the teacher retirement system, those rates shift and change year over year over year over year. And by having reserves, it really helps guard the district against fluctuations in that cost. So the two reserves that we're applying for the 23-24 school year, first employee benefits or EBLAR, this is for separated employees and it depends on the language in the collective bargaining agreement or, <coughs> so sorry, or in the individual contract. And it's uh, paying out individuals depending on the language in it, obviously for uh, leave time, sick time, holiday, other. And then the second reserve that we utilize is the employee retirement system. And as I said before, it's just helping to provide some more stability uh, when I'm trying to budget and when my team's trying to budget for retirement costs. Some years it's a whole bunch of people retiring at once, other years not so much. So just trying to make sure that uh, we're keeping things nice and, and even. The other source of revenue, that we will apply is fund balance. And this is again to lower the tax levy or hit uh, offset the burden to the taxpayer. The more that you have in fund balance, the more your financial condition looks better, improves, and allows you to do certain things. Some of those things, it reduces uh, borrowing and interest costs, and it improves your credit rating. So appropriate fund balance will be applied to next year's uh, budget to lower that uh, burden again. So that's everything, that's all areas of the revenue budget. And uh, next time, March 28th, we'll focus on curriculum and instruction, technology, health and safety. Uh, April 18th will be the budget adoption, May 2nd, the budget hearing, and May 16th, the annual budget vote and school election. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Does any of the board members have any questions for Bridget? I just had a question that you know, sure. a community member asked me, and unfortunately it's not right now going on with the banks. How do the, how do the schools protect themselves? I mean, we're talking quite a bit of money, so it's a little more than $250,000 for the bank here. How do we protect ourselves if something should close? Some, should close? There are very strict rules about yes. collateralization of school district deposits by basically you know, federal notes and, and, and bonds. Okay. And they have to the collateral as the other third party uh, escrow account. So there is a safety net for all school district deposits beyond FDIC. So there is there's definitely something. Yes, and it's reviewed frequently throughout the year as well with different letters of credit. Yeah. Had 90, 90 million dollars in the uh, yep. signature bank. That's quite a concern. Absolutely. Do many uh, community members have any questions? <clears throat> Quick question. With the rentals, we see an increase with our banking and you project like our interest goes up. Yeah, the rentals also get an area increase for yes. the yes. on your slide, it's not that much. It's not that much, but no, but is there's there a, is, there a re is that a reason to pay to like rent, you know, keep them in this building, especially this building you rent most of it from? So until a, a contract is set, uh, the revenue isn't a hundred percent. Uh, in it yet because there's still things to be determined. So between now and budget adoption, things will shift. Any other questions from the Bridget, thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. So on to number five C, adoption minutes. Um, Mr. Cotter's the uh, motion. Crap with the second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Number six is questions and comments on tonight's agenda. Does anybody in the community have any questions or comments? Like that. Consent agenda, it looks like it's number seven through 7.4. Are there any board members that want to sever anything from the consent agenda? Yeah. And we'll have you for the uh, motion. This is 56 for a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. No policies on the next agenda. We will 
We're going to push the committee reports. Uh, please hurry to the next time we have everybody on hand, please. Um, Number 10, please. Any discussion on the board members? Okay. Uh, Number 11, any new business? Not for the discussion. I do want to thank our security guards once again. Crossing guards, you know, we found out today once again winter is not done. Um, they're out there in the wintry mix. The principal and the staff that greet all the students when they come in, I think that's fantastic. Um, I also want to thank one of our local residents that owns three Bambinos. They did a uh, fundraiser um, and uh, it was quite impressive to go there to see not people that came. So they did a great job. job. They really did. They did a nice job. Um, and number 12, any questions or comments in the community on anything at all? Does anybody know who handles the, I guess it's the island, and you're coming down the new highway and making a left onto Lincoln? Lincoln? Uh, is the media? Is, yes. It's going to be a state. Is that, uh, is that set down? Uh, that road? You're, you're talking right? about the media, correct? Yes. The one you have to make a left, and you're coming down heading to, I guess, um, heading to like branch, I think it's branch and you have to make a left to. Crossing the road? Yes, crossing the road area. Right there, there's, isn't there, there's a little island yeah. there. Yeah. Um, is there, is is there an issue there? Because I, just, I just want to know if we handle a little bit of this right now. The crossing guard? No, no, the, the actual pavement there. I think it's just, yeah, is that transportation? It's a state road. I think it's, I think it's a state road. 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 Yes. I mean, is it something we should look into? No, I just, uh, I just noticed, like, I don't know if anybody else is, it's it kind of dark at night sometimes, and you can't see it when so you're reading Maybe reflect it. Yeah, yes, exactly. I, I Reflectors on the, maybe on the corners. <laughs> that, that's okay. okay. Bridget will connect with Clive and figure that out. And thank you for bringing it to our attention. Any other community members have any uh, questions or comments? Girl Scouts, we want to thank you again. Not too bad, right? I almost want to say good brownie points. But that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, that's a, it's a dad joke. Um, yes. uh, can we get a, a motion for an adjournment? Uh, Dr. Crapper? Yep. Yeah. Mr. Kylie with a second. Any discussion? There'll be no uh, executive session. Go be with that. No, no, no. Okay. Are we going on that? I want to thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Scouts. Thank you.